What's going on guys? Today we have a short video teaching you car and person detection using Python 3 and the image AI library. And here you can see we have a typical New York intersection in this video. The quality is a little whiffy because I've used my webcam to do this. So it would probably look a lot better if you have a dedicated camera or even a cell phone camera would look much better quality than this. But that's beyond the point. Mainly we're trying to understand how to do basic object detection with a few lines of code using Python. You will get different objects detected on screen like you can see we have cars, traffic light detected, we have people, trucks, buses, and so on. So jump into the code. Well, you can see here, we actually only have 17 lines of code to do this. But even before getting into the code, we need to understand our environment. So let's minimize this for a second. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is check your Python version, all right? Basically, we are going to need Python 3.6.8 to do this, or a previous version should work as well. But if you have the latest Python 3 version, you will have some issues because we're working with specific versions of Python here, as well as some of our libraries. And now we have four other libraries that we're going to need in order to do this. All right. So the first one is going to be, you're going to have to install them all using pip like usual. So you're going to do Python pip install and it's tensorflow. And we're going to need a specific version, which is 1.13.1. All right. And if you do it like that, it should go ahead and install the exact version that we're looking for. So you can see it says all my requirements are already satisfied. After you install TensorFlow, you're going to need pip install open cv dash python. All right, so you're gonna need that one as well. And then we'll also need Keras, just like that. You can see I already have it installed as well. And if anything, you can pause the video and check to see that the versions actually match the version you have on your system. And finally, we'll need image AI like that. And you can see it's already good to go. And once we have all of that set up, we'll need one more file, which is yeah, so here is the link for the correct Python version 3.6.8. And yeah, you can go and download for whatever operating system you have. Now, the other file that we'll need is the yolo.h5, which is basically the models for image recognition and object detection. So this is actually the file that's looking at your camera, whatever, if it's a webcam or a cell phone camera, whatever, and it's going like, oh, this is a car, that is a bus, this is a truck, that's a traffic light, this is a person, and so on. Basically, it has uh, models for maybe 80 to 100 different types of people, objects, what have you, right? Now, once you have all this stuff out of the way, it should take you maybe like five minutes to install this stuff, then this is the code will be running. You can see it's actually quite short. It's not a whole lot of code. We're basically importing the libraries we just installed. Then we need to get our current working directory. Now this line of code here, I am initializing my webcam as a capture device. So if you're using a pre-recorded video, you're gonna have to change this and yeah if you're using some other camera you might have to initialize it differently as well and now here right so this is where we initialize the image ai object and also we go ahead and import the yolo.h5 file so once you download this file basically you need to have it 
in the same folder as your script you can see that I have it right there yolo.h5 so you want to place them in the same directory or you're gonna have to specify the whole directory for this uh, file location now once you've gone ahead and initialized the objects and loaded basically it's a one-line thing to fire off the object detection which is this code right here and there's a few different parameters here you can see the first one is the webcam we're using and then we have the output of the file path so once it's done processing everything it's gonna go ahead and save the file in this directory and another interesting option is frames per second so you can go ahead and leave this closer to 30 if you want a more realistic uh, frames per second ratio I've gone ahead and put 4 to keep the file size shorter and also if you're gonna be recording for a long time then 30 frames per second might be a little too much and this will basically print what frames we're currently working on but yeah guys that's basically gonna be it for today's short video you can go ahead and check the code below on the link in the blog you can go ahead download it try to run it yourself and maybe if you're interested in seeing how many cars go by this busy New York intersection we can uh, run a test and try that out in 24 hours and that should be an interesting amount of vehicles but hope you guys enjoyed this short one and i'll see you next time